Hi and welcome back to the Books for Everywhere. So today we are back with my fourth edition, I think, of my TBR game, which is TBR Mini Golf, where Mini Golf decides what I read for the following month. So I have done a few of these, but this one is deciding my books for October, which I'm incredibly excited for. I feel like this time of year I have the most set idea of what I want to read, because there are so many books on my shelves that are kind of like spooky, um, and I really, really want to read those books at the moment, so... I have a whole list of books I want to fit onto this TBR. I also want to take part in a readathon in October. I'm going to do this video first because I have no idea what the prompts will be <laughs> from this video. And then I'm going to do my spoopathon TBR video as well after this one. But anyway, so this is TBR Mini Golf. This is the fourth edition of it. First, we're going to reflect on my reading for September and then I will tell you a little bit about the rules and we will get straight into the game. So firstly, I'll reflect on what I read in September. I have read four out of five books so far on the September TBR mini golf TBR. I actually had three TBRs in September. So I had my Magical Readathon, my Book Coplathon, and my TBR mini golf TBR. They were mostly overlapping, um, but I do still have one book on my mini golf TBR that I haven't read yet. However, I have read four of them. I read The Quick by Lauren Owen for the prompt adult book, and this one was a buddy read with a group of friends and this one was odd. <laughs> I'm glad we read it when we did because it kind of ended up being like a gothic Victorian fiction so it was perfect for this time of year but I liked some parts of it more than others. It was literally split into parts and I preferred some over others. I preferred some points of view over others. So I rated this one 3.5 stars because it was a mixed bag but I did still enjoy it and I'm glad that I read it because it is definitely outside of my comfort zone. So that one was for the prompt of adult pick. I am not telling you this in any kind of order by the way it was just the top of the pile <laughs> and i got also and i also got the prompt of gifted and i chose hurricane child by case and calendar because this one was gifted to me by a publisher i hadn't specified whether the gift should be from somebody i know or from a publisher so i picked this one up and i really enjoyed this one i gave it four out of five stars it is following a 12 year old girl she's kind of growing up and finding out more about herself and she's also becoming friends with a new kid at school and that kind of opens up all different questions about her sexuality this one also also talks about kind of loss of a parent not in the sense of them dying but like of the sense of them not being around anymore or moving away which was also really interesting but this had some really important discussions in it and it was a really really good middle grade i love felix ever after by case and calendar as well and i would definitely read more from them i also read once upon a broken heart which was for the prompt of proof i have not long finished this one and i absolutely loved it this one comes out on the 30th of september and I would just go and pick it up, but also read the Caraval books first. <laughs> this is a spin-off from the Caraval books, so although you don't have to read the Caraval books first, I would recommend it just to get some background information, and also this will have some minor stories and also this will have some minor spoilers for the original trilogy i really really like this i gave it 4.5 stars it wasn't quite a five but it was very close to it and i do not regret the four editions i have on pre-order and one of the prompts i got was read a book of more than 500 pages and i chose to read emperor the vampire by jay Kristoff. I had a proof of this and I wanted to get to it by the time it came out, which was something like the 7th of September. I didn't quite manage to do that. I did pick up the audiobook when it came out and I read it then over a couple of days. But this one was a slog. It is about 720 pages, so it is quite long. But honestly, I just found it very boring. This one wasn't really for me. I gave it three stars because there was stuff I liked about it, but it honestly took me around 600 pages or more to actually get into the story. <laughs> Um, which is quite bad, but it was a middling one for me. I was a little bit disappointed because I was very, very, very lucky to get a proof and I'm still very grateful for that. That has been passed on to a friend who I traded with um, for something I'm very excited for who will appreciate it a lot more than I did. Um, but I do still have this Waterstones signed edition, which I absolutely love and is really, really beautiful. And I would like to reread it again in the future, so I'm glad I have this one, but I gave it three out of five stars. And then the one I actually haven't read yet is, an, uh, every time I say this I want to say an absolutely remarkable thing, A Beautifully Foolish Endeavour, which is the second book to an absolutely remarkable thing, which I read earlier this year in less than a day and I absolutely loved. 
So I'm kind of hoping I can read this one in less than a day because I haven't read it yet and it's the 26th of September. Um, it's one of three books I need to finish by the by Thursday, the end of the month, but hopefully I can get through this very quickly because as I said I read the first book in an afternoon so hopefully this one will be set the same as that, but I absolutely love the first book. I gave it five stars, um, so yeah I really liked it and it was really interesting in its plot as well and its kind of idea behind it. So. The premise of the first book in this duology is that it follows April May who finds a statue in the middle of New York in the middle of the night um, and she kind of is baffled by it, she calls a friend, they film a video about it, put it on YouTube and it goes viral and it kind of follows the story from there not only about April May's rise to fame but also about the statues themselves and kind of how they exist because they find out they're all over the world. It left on a cliffhanger and I've never wanted to pick up a second book in a series more so I'm very excited to read this. I just need to pick it up in the next few days. So this one was for the prompt of Mark Pick. Mark Pick for this this one for me to read. So I promise I will get to it and I will feed back on this in my wrap up for the month and in my vlog. But <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't got there yet. So that was my wrap up for the last edition of this TBR mini golf game. If you would like to catch up with that and see the original video I will link the playlist for all of the videos down below. I will also link the first video so you can go and see that and have a more thorough explanation of the rules which I will explain to you very briefly now but basically if I don't end up reading any of the books on my TBR I just have to move them into the next month so that is it's not too much of a punishment but obviously it will add to my TBR if that builds up. I am fairly confident I will get to a beautifully foolish endeavour by the end of the month though so hopefully that will be okay. So I choose five books in a month unless I actually miss the hit. So I have five hits for each go. If I can't get a ball in a hole in those five hits I have to add a book to my TBR. So the standard baseline is five books and then if I miss every five goes um, then I have to add a book to my TBR and that will build up. I think that's only happened once so far <laughs> at the moment. So yeah, if I don't complete the books I just add it to my next TBR and if I get three hole-in-ones I can give myself a little bonus. I can swap a book for a prompt or I can swap the prompt out. I haven't got there yet. We will figure it out if we get there somehow. So yeah, let's get straight into the game. I have four different holes which you will see in a second. And I basically just try and hit some balls into the mini golf holes and have this little mini golf set. Each of the holes has a prompt on the back of it which I will choose um, from a box blind so you will see that prompt, I won't see that prompt. Three of them already have um, prompts on from the last game and I will need to replace the prompt on the turquoise one which we will do in a second. I do that blind, I don't know what prompt I'm getting until I actually get it in the hole. I pick a prompt and then I pick a book and we do that five times. So let's pick a prompt to go on turquoise and then we'll get started. So the prompt to go on turquoise is this one, I hope that's the right way up. I'm going to put that on turquoise and then we will get started with the game and choose some books. I do have a list of books that I would like to fit in somehow this month and if any prompts come up that fit those books I will try and put them on this TBR but other than that, yeah let's go. So I have just tilted the camera down a little bit so you can see me while I try and aim into these holes. But yeah, let's go. I have obviously no idea what the prompts are, so it's going to be a surprise for all of us. Don't know what happened there. Yay, we got one in green. It's second go, so let's see what the prompt is. So the prompt is less than 300 pages. I do have an idea of something I could include for this one, but I'm gonna have a look on my TBR and get back to you. So for this prompt, I am going to go with City of Ghosts by V. Schwab. If you don't know, me and Alex are actually hosting a read along of this series in October, so I definitely need it on my TBR either way. I will link the announcement video to that read along if you do wanna join in. But basically this one follows Cassidy Blake, who is the daughter of um, two parents who are on kind of like a paranormal ghost show. And she can also see beyond the veil and communicate with ghosts and she starts traveling with them and has her own adventures with all these Ghost Beyond the Veil. This one is set in Edinburgh. I have read it years ago, but I want to reread it around Halloween. So me and Alex are going to do a read along for all three books. So that is my first pick of this TBR game. And this is for the prompt of less than 300 pages. So let's choose a new prompt for green. And I'm going to go with this one. Okay, let's go with book two. 
That one went straight over blue. I always find blue really hard to get in. She says. Okay, so we got one on blue. <laughs> Let's see what the prompt is. So this prompt is red cover, which would have been perfect for City of Ghosts. I could very easily choose Tunnel of Bones, which also needs to go on my TBR, but I feel like I'm gonna do something a little bit different maybe and choose another book. So I haven't chosen Tall of Bones, but I have chosen Vampires Never Get Old, Tales with Fresh Bite, which is one I also want to read in October, and it's also by Victoria Schott, or is actually including V.E. Schwab, because this is an anthology of different stories about vampires, and um, the one that V.E. Schwab has written for it, uh, which is called First Kill, is being turned into a Netflix show, which is one of the reasons I want to read this, uh, other than absolutely loving Victoria Schwab, and the fact that it's about vampires, I was sent this to, I was sent this by the publisher, so thank you to Titan. So, so far we have two VE Schwab books on my TBR. Excited to get to this one, it also has an audiobook on script, which I think is how I'm going to read it. Okay, let's choose a replacement prompt for blue. Okay, I'm going to choose this one. So there's a new prompt on blue, let's go with the third book. And we got a hole in one and we got straight through blue again, so let's go and do that prompt. So the prompt that was on blue is actually manga. I only have one manga on my TBR, so I'm gonna choose that because there was literally no other choice for me. And so the book I am choosing for the prompt of manga is the second Weathering With You manga. I do not read a lot of manga, but I did have these on my shelves because I was waiting for the first, the second volume to reprint. So I did pick this one up recently. I read the first volume a couple of months ago, but I don't think I need to reread it because it's actually based off a film that I know quite well. This is written by Makoto Shinkai, who is also the director of the Weathering With You film and the Your Name film, or Kimi no Nawa, which I absolutely love with all my heart, but I really, really like Weathering as well. I've seen the film, I've read the light novel, and I'm slowly working my way through the manga, so I'm excited to carry on with the series, as I read the first one a couple months ago, and I was waiting for this one to come out, or be reprinted, which it is finally here. So this one follows two teenagers, one of which has moved to Tokyo from a small island, and one of which lives in Tokyo with her little brother, and she is a sunshine girl and the guy is actually researching for a magazine about sunshine girls. It means that she can basically create sunshine and make it stop raining and causes all kinds of catastrophes with that. So I am excited to carry on with this series. So let's choose another prompt for Bloom again. And we're gonna go with this one. Okay so we have two books left so this is for the fourth book. Let's go. Really nearly got it into orange there. <laughs> okay, we got into orange, we broke orange again as usual. <laughs> Let's see what the prompt is. And the prompt is a book you hauled in the past month. So I'm gonna look at my TBR, see what I've hauled in the past month and go from there. So for this one I'm going to choose The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. This is a graphic novel and I would really like to read this series in October and around the autumn months in general. I recently bought these books and I'm very happy that right now I only have two novels and two graphic novels on my TBR. I'm going easy on myself which is exactly what I need to do because I have a busy month in October. But anyway, that is not what you're here to hear about. You are here to listen to me talk about books and I'm going to read this one in October. So this is a three-part series at the moment. I'm not sure if more, that, more are coming out. That is following Greta who goes into this marketplace and finds tea dragons as far as I'm aware um, and she learns about the lost art of tea dragons. I think, <laughs> tea dragon caretaking. So she learns about the lost art of tea dragon caretaking. This one, this one sounds absolutely adorable. I've heard great things about it. I'm really excited to read it. And the third one looks very autumnal. So hopefully I can make my way through this entire series in October. Okay, so we're gonna choose a prompt to go on orange. And I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, so for the last book, the fifth and final book on this TBR, let's go. Yay, we got another hole in one on at Turquoise, so let's see what the prompt is. And the prompt on Turquoise was Thriller? <laughs> I don't know if I have any thrillers on my TBR. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna have a look and see what's on my TBR. 
Okay, as soon as I said that, I remembered a thriller that I have on my TBR, which is The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. So this is the proof copy that Alex gave to me, and I also have an Illumicrate copy that Blue gave to me, so thank you very much for these copies. This is Karen M. McManus's newest release. I have read all of her other books apart from this one, and I am not entirely sure what it follows other than it's following cousins I presume and I am very excited to read this one because I really like Karen M. McManus's other books. My favourite by her is Two Can Keep a Secret which is a standalone. I think this is a standalone as well. So yeah I'm very excited to read this. I'm not going to tell you what it's about because I don't think this has a synopsis and honestly I kind of want to keep myself in the dark because it's a thriller. I think that might add to the experience but Trust me when I say that this is a thriller. <laughs> it's a YA thriller by the same author as One of Us Is Lying, which is being turned into a TV show, and that is released on the 7th of October, I think. But yeah, gonna read this for the prompt of thriller. So we have all five books that I'm going to be reading in October. So let's just go quickly go through them and wrap up this video. So the first one was Less Than 300 Pages, in which I chose City of Ghosts by V. Schwab. And then we had Red Cover, which I chose Vampires Never Get Old Tales with Fresh Bite, which is an anthology, a teen anthology about vampires and also features V. Schwab. <laughs> And then we have Manga, in which I chose The Weathering With You Volume 2, which I'm very excited for. And then I picked up Hold Within the Past Month, which I chose The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. And last but not least, we had Thriller, which I chose The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. So now I just have to go and try and fit those books into my Spoopathon TBR. Wish me luck with that. Join me in that video if you would like to see what I choose to read for the Spoopathon TBR, because no doubt I will choose some more books and add to my TBR. There is definitely more books I need to read in October, so I am quite happy that I managed to pick up a manga and a graphic novel in that one, so I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. I will also be doing weekly vlogs throughout October, so please join me for those as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said, the first one in this series and my playlist will be linked down below. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time with another video. Bye!